16 in the Pike County Massacre case, George Wagner IV is charged with the murder of eight members of the Roden uh, family, along with uh, one Gilly, uh, we like to say, but uh, really eight, eight people who died, according to the state. Uh, as you know, uh, Mother Angela, Brother Jake have already pleaded guilty, uh, Father Billy awaits trial, and what was this, this over? custody of a two-year-old named Sophia, who was born uh, as Jake Wagner being the father. Okay, so uh, I have with us, as you also know, our own Anjanette Levy, who is going to give us a breakdown of what happened in the court this morning. Anjanette, I understand there's some continuation of testimony uh, that is pretty riveting. Who's on the stand? It is really riveting, Linda. This is Tabitha Clater. She's actually the ex-wife of George Wagner IV, and her testimony is very important because we've been told for years now that the motive for the murder of the Rodens and Hannah Gilly was that uh, the Wagner family wanted sole custody of Sophia. That was the daughter that Jake Wagner shared with Hannah Mae Roden. Well, Tab Tabitha Clater, she was married to George Wagner IV at the same time that Hannah Mae Roden was living with Jake Wagner and had her daughter. And she fled the house. She left the scene because she got into a fight with George uh, one night. She said that uh, Angela Wagner got very upset with her because she had gone out to the store with Hannah Mae to uh, get a, get some toys for the children. She came back and she hadn't cleaned up the, dinner, uh, the lunch plates as she had been instructed to do. Um, we heard testimony from Tabitha Clater yesterday in which she said this was a very um, strict household, Angela's house, Angela's rules. And her child was basically taken care of by Angela Wagner. Uh, the child slept with Angela Wagner and her husband at night. So she literally had no control over her own child. So she described this uh, argument that she got in to with her then husband, George Wagner IV. She said that she um, he hit her with a belt, got her into a bedroom, and she bit his um, underarm and did some other things, kicked him in between the legs, and she took off out of the house uh, to flee the home and described what happened from there. And, and Jeanette, uh, uh, she didn't die. So what does this tell us about the motive and whether George Wagner IV is responsible for the killings along with his family? Um, well, you know, uh, she didn't die. Uh, she took off um, for a gas station after hiding outside for a couple of hours. She said she hid under a truck, got on her bicycle, went up to a gas station, and called her mother to come pick her up, okay? So she goes up there. The Wagners then see her at the gas station. She gets into a police officer's car. Uh, her mother picks her up at the gas station, and then George Wagner IV files a domestic abuse claim against her. That is then resolved, and he files for divorce. So um, she didn't die, but she was chased out of the house with a shotgun, or Angela Wagner went into the house, she said, to get a shotgun to come after her. Uh, so then uh, she said George Wagner IV um, filed for divorce from her and that they convinced her that signing over custody of her son was the right thing to do. So I think we should listen to a little bit more, um, a little bit of the testimony from Tabitha Clater. And what happened outside? I told them that I was not going to go back inside, that I was going to leave. And so Angela threw a board at me and then told George that she's going to go inside and get a gun. When you say she threw a board at you, what kind of a board? A uh, two by four. Okay. And both Angela and George were outside with you at that point? Yes. Okay. And then Angela says she, she's going to go get a gun? Yes. At any point outside, did George have um, physical contact with you? Um, yeah, um, before the argument got really worse, we were outside, and 
we were arguing and he told me I needed to stop screaming or he was going to smack me and so I screamed louder and so he smacked me. Okay. And where did he smack you? In the face. Okay, so that is what led up to her, as I had mentioned before, going up to the gas station, calling her mother, escaping this home. George Wagner IV then uh, files for divorce. He files a police report alleging domestic violence by her. Um, then she signs these documents, these divorce documents, in which she's supposed to have shared parenting, but it doesn't turn out that that's the case. She asks to see her child, and she says she's not allowed to see her child uh, for at least another year. And so her child didn't even know that she was his mother. And she said that her family was also kept away from her son. So let's listen to Tabitha talk a little bit about that. Were you ever told any other relative was not allowed to accompany you on visits? Yes, none of my sisters or anyone could okay. come with me. And did George give you a reason as to why your sister or sisters could not? Because he did not like them. Okay. How many times would you say you were granted visits with your son? If we start with the McDonald's in December of 2015, um, that gets us into 2016. Cool. How many times approximately would you say you got to see your son in 2016? Maybe seven or eight times. And where would those visits occur? At George's house. And did you um, ever meet with an attorney about the issues you were having with um, visitation? during 2015. Uh, yes. Now, the time frame that Tabitha Clater was talking about right there, 2015, is very important because in April of 2016 is when the rodents were murdered. And Tabitha Clater went on to testify about conversations she had with Hannah Mae Roden on Facebook in which they discussed the fact that Hannah Mae was preparing for some type of custody battle with Jake Wagner. And they had quite a few discussions about this. And it was actually Tabitha Clater's mother who on Facebook in December of 2015 basically said to Hannah Mae Roden, don't make the mistake my daughter did. Do not sign over custody of your son. And Hannah Mae Roden responded, I'll never sign papers. They will have to kill me first. Angela Wagner saw that, e that Facebook message, and that is what we are told by prosecutors. And what we will supposedly hear from Jake and Angela Wagner when they testify is what started this whole scheme to murder this family so they could have sole custody of uh, Sophia, that little girl. So um, very disturbing testimony, very sad testimony. Tabitha Clater later got custody of her son in 2018 after the Wagners had moved to Alaska and uh, she wasn't allowed to see her child again uh, after they moved to Alaska. She said she asked George Wagner about that and he said, he's my son, I have to do what's best for him. And so she wanted to get her son back, but then they got arrested. So she ended up getting uh, custody of her son back. And also a disturbing incident she described uh, was the fact that her young daughter, who she took over to see uh, her son at the Wagner home, uh, ended up being becoming unresponsive, and they believe that the Wagners somehow gave this baby Xanax, and they later took the child, the baby, to the hospital, and it was determined Xanax was in the baby's system. Tabitha Clater said she doesn't take that drug, and neither did her husband, so uh, the inference there is that the Wagners somehow did this uh, as she was visiting her son, slipped the baby some Xanax to get Tabitha in trouble so she would look like an unfit mother and not be able to get custody of her son back. Oh, Anjanette, I, I, I'm agog, but you know what? I know who's not in the courtroom. That would be the defense attorney. What do you expect of cross-examination? You know, I think they're going to be really, They, I think they have to be very careful, Linda, because I think that Tabitha Clater is coming across 
as a very sympathetic character. They are going to paint her as somebody who is not a fit mother and that that's why George had to take custody of the boy. I'm sure they will bring up some things that maybe not are not flattering to her. But I think they have to be really careful because the jurors yesterday when I was out there were very much hanging on her every word. They were listening to everything she had to say and today's testimony has gone on even longer. So I can only imagine that they're watching this and watching her tear up as she talks about losing a touch with her young son uh, because of this family. And I think they're going to have to be careful, but I think they're going to go after her because they're going to have to say that George Wagner was not like the rest of his family. That's the line that they've been giving the jury ever since opening statements.